Hi, I'm Jano, and if you're new here, I do pencil drawings. So I'm going to be diving into some of the details of one of the drawings I did called Approval. I'm going to be focusing in on the hummingbird in this drawing, so focusing on the techniques that I was using throughout that part of the drawing. So hopefully there'll be something interesting for us to kind of pick apart. Yeah, let's see how it goes. Also, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, but I'll tell you more about them later. So the first tool that I'm using here is a 2B mechanical pencil. The width of the graphite is 0.7mm, but slightly on the thicker end of mechanical pencils, and I find that that's a bit quicker to block out areas in the early stages of a drawing. Also, depending on the size of your drawing, so my drawings are usually a little bit larger, and so using a slightly thicker tool would be better. But if a drawing is smaller, you're going to want to use 0.5 or even 0.35. I find that 2B is actually soft enough to go quite dark, so I'm not too afraid to use this to actually start doing some of the darks in the eyes, but I'm going to come back into this later with an 8B. I've already done most of the mapping, so I'm actually diving straight into the contrast work and the detail work. Hummingbird's feathers have this beautiful scale-like quality. It'll almost look like a little leaf or like leaves of, of feathers, so I'm trying to capture those larger shapes first, and then I'm going to try and identify the individual little strands in those feathers if I can, but this is really, really tiny, so it gets very difficult very quickly. You can see the paper's bouncing quite a bit every time I put pressure, and that's because of the way that I stretch my paper to try and get it flat. It actually pulls tight, almost like a drum skin, so whenever I push onto it, it can get a little bit irritating with the paper moving underneath my pencil. But I've learned to work with it. Sometimes I'll even use it as a gauge to see how hard I'm pressing. It even helps me sometimes to push even softer. I'm making sure to keep the highlight on the edge of each of these feathers quite crisp, so I'm not wanting to go over that. I might go over that with a brush a bit later, but with applying hard graphite straight onto the paper, I'm wanting to be careful of the areas that I intend to use as highlights later on. Things are getting a little bit more detailed here, so I've shifted over to a 3.5mm mechanical pencils. So this is the smallest diameter you can get for graphite, and it's really helpful in doing those really, really tiny details. Same principle applies. I'm applying hard graphite and wanting to look after my highlights. At this stage, I'm mostly just using cross hatching or more of like a scribble blending technique to, to try and shade. This is helpful because it's very quick, but I'm going to jump into it very soon with either cotton wool or brushes. And this is just to smooth out those pencil strokes, get a bit of a base tone, and the layering starts here. So now I'm going to be alternating between smoothing out my pencil work. It becomes desaturated every time I do that, and then I'll move over it again with my erasers and my pencils slowly but surely layering things up to get the tone and the contrast that I'm looking for. The way that you end in the paper and affect the fibers of the paper end up affecting your texture. So you want to be aware of that. Even if you know that you're going to be blending over your pencil marks and trying to hide those pencil marks, the way that you've affected the fibers of the paper underneath still actually end up coming through a little bit. So that can be helpful with trying to achieve really fine textures and it can also work against you when you're working on super smooth textures. I really want to try and get the illusion of layers to these feathers. So with some of the shadows, I'll almost feel like I'm drawing the highlight along with the shadow. So it's hard to explain this, but to, to kind of create like a, a jagged transition, which feels like there's hairs or there's fibers from the feathers that are almost overlapping. I always try to think of it as like you're drawing the shadow, which is accentuating the highlight. And I'll come into it later with a Tombow Mono Zero eraser or a Needable eraser to try and bring that highlight out. This is helping me build the illusion that these feathers are layered on. The overarching technique kind of stays the same. It's these layers of applying graphite, smoothing it out, and losing a bit of that contrast, then going back in with an eraser to try and pull some of that contrast out, and then going back in with a pencil to try and add richness to the darker tones. It's super important to keep your pencils super sharp, especially if you're not using mechanical pencils. Just a little tip here, I've started using a grinding wheel to get insanely sharp finishes on my pencils, and that's been a bit of a game changer with drawings after this one. You never want to be fighting your tool too much, 
so often I'll let the tool dictate some of the texture. So even with the Tombow Mono Zero Razor, which is quite a precise tool, it's not as precise as I'd like, but I'll still drag it across the page and let it go where it wants to go a little bit. And I'll see if I agree with how it's chosen to, to make some marks. If I don't, then I'll just go over with a brush or a blending stamp to try and erase those marks. But if I do agree with those marks, then I'll use them and lean into them and enhance them. And that feels a lot more harmonious. I know that it starts to feel a bit more esoteric, like you're working in collaboration with your tool, but sometimes it's really difficult to try and fight your tools to get the textures that you want. It's a little bit easier to try a couple times while letting the tool take the path that it wants to take. I actually, I get pretty anxious when I draw. I often get scared that I'm gonna be making a mistake or making a mark that I can't come back from. It's often really helpful to take it slow and to make some marks, use a blending stamp to see if, if they can move the graphite in a way that I like and to just really tease out the, the final texture that I'm looking for. With this style, or the way that I did this drawing, it can be really, really difficult to get that bokeh effect, to try and blend in graphite with the background. I think I used either linseed oil or a solvent in the background to try and get that background to be even darker. And that can always be troubling to then try and blend pencil work in. But I think with pushing quite hard and really taking care on those edges, I managed to get a little bit of that bokeh effect, but I'm still experimenting with loads of different ways to try and marry these different techniques. I'm working now with the 3.5 mil again, and the feathers and the wings have a very strong line moving in one direction. And so the way that I'll work with my pencil strokes when there is a strong line is to actually work in the opposite direction of that strong line. And that prevents us from creating these harsh, really strong lines which feel artificial. They feel more cartoony often. Um, and it can really rob your drawings of that realistic look. So I found that you get a lot more organic feel by drawing a harsher line, but the way you draw it is by, by creating marks that run perpendicular to the shadow or to the line that you're drawing. Once I've gotten a bunch of the details down, often I'll find that I've lost the overall tone. And so I'll go in with a needle eraser to try and pull out and soften a lot of those details. Subtlety is super important with graphite. It is a subtle medium by nature. And so often we're trying to lean into these harsh contrasty tones. But when you realize that you are losing some of that subtle mid tone or losing some of that highlight, it's important to step back and potentially erase some of that work to just honor the larger shape rather than those tiny details. I'm using an 8B now to work into some of those shadows. I really want the contrast to pop, so I find that the darks that I can get with an 8B are just a lot richer than what I can get with a 2B. And once again, blending in some of those pencil strokes with a blending stump. The hummingbird was quite a crucial part of this drawing, and so it needed a lot of attention and care. So yeah, hopefully this is helpful with a bit of insight into my process and the way that I just slowly build up my details and my tones. Okay, so Jess and I were just running through the edit quick, and I forgot to mention that the full length time lapse of this video is on our other channel. So you can go over there and check it out. That's just like real time, full length of the drawing from start to end. So that might be helpful for some of you. Cool back to the normal video. Before I end this video, just want to give a quick shout out to the studio sponsor Squarespace. I've been working with them for a couple of years now and they've played a huge role in my career, not only in helping me maintain this channel by sponsoring these videos, but more importantly, I was looking for a way to showcase my work early on in my career and I didn't have time to learn HTML and the whole idea of trying to build a beautiful seamless website seemed very daunting for me. I needed a way to showcase my work, make it easy for collectors to find me and get in touch with me. And I felt that Squarespace did that effortlessly. I never had to patch or upgrade anything. I could register a domain with them and set up an online store. And most importantly, I could design a portfolio and show my work the way that I wanted to. Also, every time I got stuck, their amazing support team helped me out instantly. So if you're looking at building a website, give Squarespace a try. And if you decide that you love them, use the soft code and get 10% off your first purchase. So there we go. I really enjoyed diving back into the process process of drawing this bird. It's interesting for me to see because my techniques have started to change slightly with the incorporation of brushes, but the fundamentals are all the same, especially with my relationship with tools and the way that we sometimes have to let them guide the drawing a little bit, as difficult as that can be. Yeah, so I, I hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll try and answer them there. Remember to leave a like if you enjoyed it. It helps the channel out in a huge way. As always, thanks for the support. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.